is New Day Northwest. Now, here's Margaret Larson. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to New Day. The culinary arts team from Joint Base Lewis McCord just returned from Fort Lee, Virginia, with a handful of ribbons and awards from the 43rd Annual Joint Culinary Training Exercise, which brings military cooking teams together from across the U.S. and Europe. Please welcome a few of the representatives from JBLM's team, Staff Sergeant Paula Sanchez, and in the audience, Staff Sergeant Mark Sousa, Sergeant Clinton Bautista, and Private First Class J.C. Jimenez. Thank you very much for joining us. So, Paula, this is like brand new to me. I didn't realize that the military had culinary arts teams. Tell me about what you do. So, for us to get onto the team, we have to have tryouts, and it's we take the best of the best. So, we have uh, food service personnel who come in from all the dining facilities on the base, and everybody tries out, and we see who makes it, and we take them and train them and go to Fort Lee. Which is amazing. Uh, what is your cooking background? Uh, this is my first year competing. Are you kidding? No. So you were just kind of a natural at this? Yeah. And tried out? And then what happens at the exercise? Is it an actual competition or what happens at Fort Lee? So it's it's more of a competition. Uh, they have different events for everybody to do for like students and professionals. And then uh, we have team events that we also do. And so we're looking at some video of this happening. These are teams from the U.S. Are there teams from other countries as well? Yes, there's international teams that, uh, that compete. So where do the people who are cooking at this competition normally cook? Uh, normally we're just in our dining facilities. And that dining facility is open to? Uh, all military personnel to come and eat. So um, this is a whole new world to me. I had no idea that our military was eating this well, and I'm delighted. <laughs> I think that's, that's terrific and good on you. What are we cooking today to demonstrate your skills? So today we're going to do a seared scallop, and then we also have a cauliflower puree and a Jack Daniels coconut sauce. Good Lord, I thought the guys were going around on MREs. What's <laughs> happening? Um, that sounds delicious. How do we do it? All right, so you want to make sure your, your pan is pretty hot. Okay, and this looks like a well-loved pan. Yes, we use it quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start by adding butter, and then uh, I'm going to mince up some of the garlic and throw in some thyme. All right. So, so how do you get trained for all this? Do you need something from down here? Uh, so I just need a spoon. Spoon? Here yep. you go. Here you go. Thank your you. Your implements. <laughs> there you go. All right. How do you continue your training once you got into the military? Uh, so my next step is going to have to be um, the advanced culinary course, mm -hmm. which is also at Fort Lee. So that's kind of just expand my horizon and make me better at what I do. How many people do you feed normally? Depends on the size of the dining facility. I've worked at ones that we've served anywhere from like 100 to 300 and some that are much larger and consolidated and you can feed anywhere from five to a thousand wow. per meal. All right. All right, so we got the butter going. Yep, now we're gonna get some garlic. garlic. Frankly, if you start with butter and garlic, it's gonna be good, whatever it is. Good aromas. Is this one of your favorites? I do like scallops. What dish did you prepare in Fort Lee? So at Fort Lee, um, I competed doing uh, the MKT Mobile Kitchen Trailer event. It's a three course fine dining and it was uh, all the professional team members, we all prepared it, so it was a beef tenderloin. And then we had mixed vegetables, uh, bread pudding. Okay, that sounds pretty good, bread pudding. Yep, and then what else? Now would this actually, when you say mobile kitchen, is this something that would actually be prepared in the field ever? Yes, that's, that's what we use when we go to the field. What now? <laughs> So, I feel like I'm learning these mind-blowing things. All right, so we put in a little time, right? Yes. So when we have our field training environment, um, depending, like I said, like on the, the size of the unit, mm -hmm. uh, we have, for my unit, we have a mobile kitchen trailer. So, you know, it's a little tiny kitchen, pops up, set it up. and you Like can an RV? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and you just have to make the best of it, yes. as the military does, wherever it goes. Okay, I want to talk to Mark Sousa, Staff Sergeant Mark Sousa. Uh, where are you? I'm right here. There you are. Uh, congratulations. Let me tell you, first of all, this man has won the Armed Forces Master Chef of the Year throughout the Armed Forces. A big dang deal. Which, which branch do you serve in? I serve in the Army, ma'am. In the Army? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for calling me, ma'am. I feel like I'm back in my growing up days. My father was career Air Force. Uh, how did you feel about winning this award? And tell us about the awards for your other team members. 
Honestly, I was overwhelmed. Um, it's something that I've never thought I would be able to do. Um, but thanks to my teammates uh, for their support and encouragement, um, this win was actually for them. Um, it's for the whole team. That's nice of you uh, to say. What did you do to win the award? Is it based on um, a long history or something you do at the competition itself? Um, honestly, it was kind of like sparing the moment when I actually did it. Right. Um, What'd you make? I actually made a the the meat the protein that I had to make was a veal plank and also veal cheeks. So I had to pressure cookerize that just to get the cheeks to be really tenderized. And I also made um, cauliflower puree. I also made polenta um, and some kind of sauce to go with it as well. Good grief. I wasn't yeah. hungry before I walked in here, and now <laughs> I'm just starving. There's a long history, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, history of cooking in the military, right? Yes. It's super important. Your boots and what you eat. Yes. <laughs> Those things have to be right. Um, how do you incorporate thoughts about that history and the importance of that into your everyday work? You know, I just always think about, you know, um, we march with, with our stomach, you know, um, yeah. just to get the mission done, we have to always have healthy food, good food in our system. Um, without that, uh, the support of the cooks in the field or in garrison, you know, these soldiers will not be able to f uh, fulfill their duties every single day. So to me, just giving back to the soldiers and making sure that they actually uh, get fed right, um, that's always pretty much a good day for me, you know, yeah. just seeing the smile faces. Uh, when they go to your chow line or to your dining facilities and knowing that you actually did something good for them and they go out there feeling fulfilled. That's amazing. Congratulations on Thank your you. award. The team brought back other ribbons and, and recognitions. <clears throat> Can you describe? Yes, yeah, so the whole team all t total together, we brought home 23 medals. Uh, wow. We have one gold best in show for the centerpiece that Sergeant Bautista actually created. Um, and we also had 10 silvers and also 13 bronze medal and another gold for the Master Chef. That is amazing. Let's give them a round of applause for uh, just another area of excellence that we didn't know anything about. Um, congratulations, you guys. Okay, how are we doing over here? We're, all, we're almost finished. And so then we have, have the scallops in. Yes, and so then we have a uh, fried cauliflower over here. And I love the idea that, you know, the cooking is an exercise in excellence, but the purpose behind it, to feed the troops and keep mm -hmm. people um, healthy and well and well fed while they're doing something on behalf of all the rest of us is a pretty amazing thing. You gotta love what you do. Okay, I'm gonna turn the stove off for you. Okay. A little cauliflower went over there. Do you want to plate it up? Yeah, um, if you could mix up the oh, microgreens. I'm with doing something. <laughs> some uh -oh. of the balsamic vinegar. Okay. About, uh, three tablespoons into that and just three? mix them all up. Okay. That's simple enough. Thank you for giving me an easy task. I don't want to mess this up. What kind of greens are these? Microgreens. Those look delicious. What's in the balsamic? So you have um, balsamic vinegar, a little bit of uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic. Okay, simple enough. That smells delicious. All right, what next? All right, so we'll go ahead and start plating. I'm gonna move this over here. If you want to uh, zest the lemon. Um, I'm bad at this, but I will try. How, right. how much Just, do you uh, want? Just keep it on here. We're going to use it as a garnish. Okay. Oh, all right. That I'm better at. I never know how to dislodge the zest. It's a very um, ungraceful process at my house. Okay, so you did a, what is this? A little it, so it's just chef for, smear? Yeah, a smear. I like it. It's probably one of my favorites to do. It's just a little <laughs> decoration. Is it aioli or what? No, this is a cauliflower puree. Oh, that's the cauliflower. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love purees. Like any, like anybody, all the guys who work with me know that my favorite thing to do is purees. Like I'm like puree it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer to everything, yeah, right? Much. Put it in a puree. All right. Little scallops on top. You've got this plated different ways in front of us, right? It's the yes. same dish, just same different dish, ways to do it. Same dish, just showing different different uh, techniques how you can uh, plate anything. I love this idea. All right, we want to sprinkle some of this All right, did I do okay? Yes. Good. That smells super fresh. Where do you get your ingredients? So for us, I'll take this. We um, get our ingredients from Cisco and then also from... The big food company. Yeah, and if we need special ingredients, uh, we go to the Metro in Tacoma and we get our ingredients there. And so what happens when you're cooking in the field? Where does the food come from? Uh, the field comes from Big Army. <laughs> Who knows where that starts, but it gets there somehow. 
All right, so right here we have um, bacon and panko. Okay. So we're gonna put some of that on top. So we get a little bit of that, but not a lot of breading because we're being healthy, right? Of course. Now, do the big guys eat like 10 of these? Probably, <laughs> I mean, they're small. We, we, I usually like to use the, the bigger ones. Uh, so you only had to put like one on a plate, the, the right. U10. And then the greens, and do the they greens. go any place? Yep. Put those. That looks delicious. Perfect. Right Who there. knew that the, the military was um, excellent at so many things, and now it includes what you guys do with food. Thank you very much for being here. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you. Um, not only are we honored to have you here as veterans and service people, but we're honored to have you here as people who are chefs and excellent in your food field. Please visit our website for more information about JBLM's culinary arts teams, as well as the centennial celebration of the Army's first corps, which is the most decorated Army Corps in U.S. history. Congratulations, and once again, thank you for your service. Thank you. Coming up in just a moment, a new book spotlights Seattle's unique role in the private space race, including Amazon's Jeff Bezos. We'll be back with that after this. This New Day cooking segment brought to you by Ferguson Bath Kitchen and Lighting Gallery, powered by Electrolux.